According to the translations and the purports of the first canto, in the previous chapters that we're, where we're reading from, it is described that Kali Yuga entered at the time of the battle of Kurukshetra. But because Krishna was here, Ka Kali was dormant. Kali was here, but could not really create any effects. Now in previous yugas, Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapa Yuga, we read, there were reversals in those days too. There were demons, asuras like Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyaksha, Ravana, Kumbhakarna, and so many others. But still the predominating energy, they were inter trying to interfere with that energy, but the predominating energy in Satya Yuga was goodness, longevity of life, brilliant memory, natural inclination toward piety. And the society at large was very, very much dedicated to sustaining an atmosphere of, it, of purity and enlightenment. It diminished in Treta Yuga, diminished in Dwapa Yuga, but in Kali Yuga, the personification of Kali means the all-pervading energy is going to be quarrel and hypocrisy and religion being irreligion and irreligion being religion, exploitation of the earth, exploitation of other living beings who are Krishna's children, exploitation of each other, exploitation of our own life by plundering it with so many distractions. Kali entered the time of Kurukshetra battle. We're just waiting for an opportunity. Kali was here just waiting for that opportunity to strike. Couldn't do it when Krishna was here. After the battle of Kurukshetra, Krishna personally over saw the coronation of Yudhisthira Maharaj as the emperor of Hastinapur, which is the capital of the kingdom of the entire planet Earth. We read in Mahabharata, which is approximately 100,000 verses by Srila Vyasadeva. And then we read the very essence of Mahabharata in its explanations by the same author, Vyasadeva and Srimad Bhagavatam. All of the difficulties that Yudhisthira and his brothers, the Pandavas, had to endure. Two of the primary scriptures are Ramayana and Mahabharata. A primary theme in both scriptures is the troubles that the good people had to endure. Ram, Sita, and Lakshman were banished exiled for 14 years and we read about all the different asuras they had to fight they lived in wearing tree bark lakshman hardly slept from the beautiful royal um, opulence of ayodhya they were living under trees on the ground eating roots and Srila Prabhupada describes that because ram was honoring the word of his father when it was going to be one of the great greatest wars in the history of the world. Ram could have gone back to Ayodhya or even sent a message to Ayodhya, send, send the armies. But in honor of him being in exile, he didn't do that. He gathered the monkey soldiers and the great battle of Sri Lanka was fought. And that was a previous yuga. So Krishna, when he was performing his wonderful pastimes in this world, Kali had no place, just waiting and waiting. After Yudhisthira Maharaj was coronated as king, we read in the first canto about his mother, Queen Kunti, who actually suffered 
the maximum of everybody through all of that. So when we think about the banishment of Ram and all of that happened, what was the heart of Kosalya? Ram's mother, Sita's mother, Lakshman's mother from the perspective of love. And in Mahabharata, and in the section of Srimad Bhagavat, all the challenges that the Pandavas endured before the exile, during the exile, after the exile, the person who was affected maximum was Kunti, the Queen Kunti, because she's the mother. She's feeling so deeply for them. And when all the problems were solved, all the dangers and calamities were behind them. Now Yudhisthira is the undisputed king. When Krishna is about to leave, Kunti is praying, Krishna, let those calamities come again and again, because in the face of these dangers, I had nowhere else to turn except you. And in remembering you, I'm seeing you. And in seeing you, I'm not seeing I can be free from birth and death. The Bhagavatam tells, Padam Padam Nyadvi Padam Datesha. In this world, there is danger at every step. And it's not that it's like that for the devotees, and it's not, and it's, and it's like that for everyone except devotees. It's like that for everyone, the world. But when we take shelter of Krishna, we receive. It's not that physically we're not going to grow old, get diseased, and die, but when we take shelter of Krishna, in Krishna's blessing, we are transcendental. So in that sense, a devotee doesn't ask for miseries, but sees miseries when they do inevitably come as like a like a signboard directing toward the mercy of Krishna. <laughs> the signboard doesn't take you there, <laughs> but it does show us where to go. And that is Kunti's lesson.